How to Configure Jenkins Agent Disk Thresholds. In Jenkins LTS 2.440.1, an improvement was added to allow for the configuration of disk thresholds globally as well as per agent. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make those configuration changes. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.440.1. Attached to this controller, I have two different agents. If we go ahead and click on Build Executor Status, that'll take us to our overview page. Notice I have an Agent 1 that has roughly 214 gig free of disk. I have an Agent 2 that has about 35 gig free of disk. And then also the built-in node or the controller itself has about 16 gig of free disk. The two primary columns that we were going to look at are free disk space and free temp space. So what we want these thresholds to do is anytime we cross below 300 gig, we want to get a warning. And anytime we cross below 200 gig, we want everything to stop. Again, very high numbers, but those numbers work for this first example. Now, how do we make this configuration change? Now we can make this change both globally and per agent. So let's do globally first. Let's go ahead and click on configure monitors. What we'll see is that we have a free disk space section and a free temp space section. The default for both of these are one gig for the threshold, the base threshold where everything shuts off and two gig for the warning threshold. Now, in case you didn't want to mark the agents offline, you could select the checkbox and therefore the agent would not go offline if one of these thresholds are met. But for our example right now, just so you can see how it will actually shut things down, let's change our free disk space section to 200 for the free space. So that's the very bottom where everything's gonna get shut off. And for the free space warning, again, it's a warning, we're gonna say at 300 gig. We're not gonna make any changes to temp space. Now free temp space works exactly the same as free disk space, it's just looking at different values. Let's go ahead and click on save. Now that we save this, let's take a look at the output here. Our output node is showing red under free disk space because it's below 200 gig. Our agent two is showing offline, red X, because again, it's below 200 gig, but agent one is showing yellow for the warning because it's below 300, but above 200. Now, if we take a look over here on the left-hand side, we can see the built-in node is offline. Agent two is offline, but agent one appears to be normal. Let's go and see what happens when we actually go and run a sample job. Now this sample job, test pipeline, if we take a look at the configuration, we are running a pipeline against agent one. So agent one is still showing online and we're just gonna echo out hello world. But notice what happens when we run this job. We'll go ahead and click on build now. We can see that the build is scheduled, but notice that no builds actually schedule. Why is that? Well, again, it goes back to our overview here. Our built-in node or our controller is currently offline because it does not have enough free disk space to actually do work. So this is due to our global configuration being very stringent. It has a hard lower limit of 200 gig and a warning of 300 gig. So what we can do is we can go ahead and go back into our configuration and let's go ahead and modify the changes for our built-in node or our controller itself. We'll go to configure and we're going to select disk space monitoring thresholds. Now in this case, because we've enabled it, it shows us our defaults of one gig and two gig again that we saw when we first started out. Let's go ahead and click on save and then click on nodes in the breadcrumb and notice what happened here. Our agent one is showing idle. Agent two is still showing offline, but notice our built-in node or our controller is showing fine again because if we take a look at it, we can see that it's completely in the black. So again, for this scenario, our warnings at two gig and our offline is at one gig. So if we were to go back over to our job, and run it one more time. This time the job will start up because the controller is now back online. And since agent one is still online, even though it's a warning state, it will still go ahead and complete successfully. Now we really don't want to override the controller. We've set up all of our globals and then we overrode our controller configuration. What we really want to do, since agent two appears to be the problem in this, let's go ahead and go back and set our global to our standard defaults and we'll go and modify just agent two. So let's go ahead and go back into our controller first. We'll modify this and disable the thresholds. So when we go back to nodes, what we're going to see now is the built-in node, the controller is now offline again. But now let's go back into configure monitors and let's modify this to be one gig and two gig, back to the default. 
and click on Save. It may take a moment for those thresholds to catch up, but once they do, what we can see here is our controller is online as well as our two agents. So again, let's go ahead and pick Agent 2. We'll go into Agent 2, click on Configure, scroll down to the bottom, select Disk Space Monitoring Thresholds. In this case, my lower level is going to be 30 gig, and my warning is going to be at 40 gig. Right now, we're at roughly 34 gig. So we'll go ahead and click on Save. We'll go back over to our Nodes page, and what we can see here is that for Agent 2 now, we are getting a warning for free disk space, but we are not offline. We can see Agent 2 is still currently online. And again, if we decide that configuration isn't right for us, we can go back into Agent 2, click on Configure, go back down to the section where Disk Space Monitoring Thresholds is. We can uncheck it. Once we uncheck it and click on Save, then the global configuration is going to take over, and then we'll see again that Agent 2 is back happy and healthy. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell. And you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.